All right, folks, a huge day, a down day on the market. In fact, a third worst point loss. Now, nowhere near, nowhere near uh, the record books with respect to percentage losses. And as you can see on your screen, the selling continues a uh, little bit off the lows in the aftermarket hours, but we know there's going to be a tremendous amount of tension. There was a lot of tension coming into the session. Here now to help us hash it all out, Stock Swoosh, uh, from Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo. All right, Melissa, uh, you know, listen, what you can see, Earlier in today, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was the only major index that hadn't broken its 50-day moving average. It bounced 100 points off of it, but as it drifted again, you knew that was the last damn to break. And it's, I guess the only thing that stopped us from going down more was the closing bell. Where do we go from here? Really, the closing bell didn't even stop because, like you just said, we're down tonight in the after hours, and we could be down even more tomorrow morning in the pre-market. But it depends how big we gap down tomorrow morning in the open. We might rally then. I don't know. I mean, this is, like, too hard to call right here. There's so much time between now and 930 when we open. I will say this. There wasn't a trigger to create this sell-off that I think – people should be worried about. For example, rewind back to the beginning of the year in February. It all came out about the tariffs and everyone was worried about a big tariff war, which really did last quite for most of the year and we haven't even figured it all out yet. So that was the trigger for the massive sell-off that happened in February and then we rested all year. See, I thought it was different because I thought the sell-off began February 2nd mm -hmm. when, the, when the jobs number came out and wages were up 2.9%, a lot more than Wall Street thought. We were off 666 points then. I I think February was all about the Fed. I think I don't think that the, the trade war began until March 22nd when we officially launched and the next day the market hit its low uh, and we were down 724 points. But I'm looking at four of the worst five days. I think they're all Fed related. I think the Fed well, is, is a bigger a threat. And, and, and today certainly it was the Fed. Today was the Fed again, but I'm saying there wasn't like some dramatic thing. When I saw the market down this morning, I really saw that people bought yesterday, which I never would have told people to do because we dropped from off the highs last week. We made new highs. You, you can't say, oh my gosh, we're so, we're, we're showing so much weakness here right now. We just made brand new all-time highs in the Dow. We almost got up to 27,000. That's amazing. Well, to your point, nobody rings the bell at the top, right? There's no magic. Hey, boom, boom, boom. That's it's right. all over. Get out, get out. No one rings the bell on the bottom. But one thing our viewers do, no, uh, and I got to tell you, most of the most of the people who contacted me today mm -hmm. were looking to buy. No, now, don't do that right now. A few years ago, not, they don't yeah. necessarily want to buy t right at this moment, okay. but they want to buy. They see this pullback as an opportunity because over the last nine years, it has been a major chance to make a lot of money every time we've gone through one of these. Well, I will say this is what's different. A lot of people missed the rally. They missed the rally in 2016. And then when the market kept rallying in 2017, people said, oh my gosh, I can't buy now. And then we kept making new highs. So this time around, people are getting smarter. Just like you said, they're saying, well, what should I do? I would not buy necessarily until you'd see a sign of strength. Now, what would that be? A, a sizable gap up in the market, which could happen at any point in time give in the us, next Give few us weeks. a percentage. What is sizable? 1%, 2% open? Uh, it depends how big of a down day we have. For example, tomorrow morning, I can't see any way to buy. I'll just be honest with you. But Friday morning, there's some numbers out, and all the major banks report that you got to be on alert. Big one is J.P. Morgan Chase. If J.P. Morgan Chase performs on Friday morning and rallies and gaps up big, the market could turn around on Friday. I'm not, I don't know for sure because sure. I don't know what they're going to say, but I'm telling you Friday could be a day when you might want to get in. J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, PNC. Now, let me ask you, what if they lay an egg? Because one of the big issues here in this market uh, for the last two years is where do you go when tech isn't working? Now, coming into the year, every brilliant maven on Wall Street said you got to be in financials. They'll naturally go higher as the Fed raises rates. I think they have been a dud thus far. So what happens if financials don't provide that leadership? It's the end of the year. This is the last earnings report. They got to do it now. And actually, they have been a dud. They they did rally right. in the last two weeks, but look at looking at the earnings reports for the first three quarters, they were dudsville. Even when they gapped up, they went nowhere, or sold off. I'm telling you, they really got to do it on Friday. Do it. Uh, I'm going to bring you back later on in the show. Okay. We're going to take a quick break, folks. Uh, stay with us. A lot to talk about and prepare you for tomorrow morning. We'll be right back.